There are nine words that Jesus spoke to a blind man in Mark chapter 10. And those words changed the trajectory of his life. What are they? Find out next on 41 Strong. Hey everyone, welcome to 41 Strong Podcast, Chuck Tate here with you back in the studio on a nice crisp November morning, about a week away from Thanksgiving. Are you ready? Man, we have so much to be thankful for. I'm so grateful that God gives us everything that we need to hold on and to stand strong. 41 Podcast is a podcast that delivers encouraging scriptures and stories to do just that, to help people like you and I hold on and stand strong. For more information about 41 Strong, you can go to my website, chuckytate.com. That's chuckytate.com. Or you can go to 41willcome.com. I also want to make mention of a free seven-day reading plan called 41 Will Come. And it's available on YouVersion Bible app. I encourage you, if you don't have the Bible app, to download it and then search for 41 Will Come and sign up for the seven-day reading plan. More than 10,000 people across the globe have already completed it, so I hope you will be one of them. All right, well, today is episode 152, 152. Last week, we talked about the Lord's Prayer. And I broke it down piece by piece, phrase by phrase, so that if you missed it, episode 151, it's available, so check it out. Today, we're going to continue on the subject of prayer, and I want to talk about big, bold, audacious prayers, approaching God boldly. In fact, the Word of God says to come to the throne boldly that we might obtain. So God, I really believe, wants us to go to him. He wants us to share our dreams. He wants us to share our our heart with him, our requests, our needs, our petitions. The word says in Philippians, don't worry about anything, Philippians 4 says, but pray about everything. We know that petition is a form of prayer where we bring God our personal request. Intercession is a type of prayer where we pray on behalf of of others. Well, today I want to focus on a story, one of my favorite stories in the Gospels, Mark chapter 10, and it's about a blind beggar, and his name is Bartimaeus, and he hears that Jesus is going to be coming by. So he has an opportunity to see his life change. If only he could somehow get the attention of Jesus. Let's read it together, all right? Mark chapter 10. I want to encourage you to take some time to read Mark 10 verses 46 through 52. Sit down, read it, let it marinate a little bit, read it a couple different translations, and let it become a part of you because Jesus is going to say nine words that completely change Bartimaeus' life. But before Bartimaeus can hear those words, he has to break through the crowd to get into the presence of Jesus. Let's read it, all right? Mark 10, verse 46. Then they reached Jericho, and as Jesus and his disciples left town, it says a large crowd followed him. Why? Because he was a celebrity. Not only was he the son of God, but in the eyes of the people, this guy was larger than life. He was doing miracles. He was opening blind eyes, opening deaf ears, causing the lame to walk again. There was nobody else like him, and everywhere he went, a crowd followed him. And the word on the street was, he was passing by. We'll read about it. A blind beggar named Bartimaeus was sitting beside the road. That's how he made his living. He sat beside the road daily asking people for a handout. It's a a very humble way to make a living, and it wasn't a great way to make a living. He was not thriving, but Bartimaeus was in survival mode. So when he heard, verse 47 says, when he heard that Jesus of Nazareth was nearby, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Now, I don't know about you, 
all right? But I, I, I've, I've met a couple celebrities in my lifetime, and each time I was nervous, all right? And if you've ever met a celebrity, you know, maybe, maybe you were apprehensive about uh, approaching them. Uh, my wife and I and one of my good friends um, and his wife, we were in Chicago eating at P.F. Chang's a few years ago, and we saw actress Jane Seymour, um, most, you know, most people know her as Dr. Quinn, the medicine woman, right? And there she was eating, and my friend and I were like, oh my gosh, there she is. You know, my wife, his wife were all like, you know, just, just a, a couple booths over from us. So I actually got out my phone, right? And um, I, I was going to, I was going to take a picture, take a picture of her. And right when I got out my phone to go take a picture, my friend stopped me. He's like, whoa, 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 no, 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 you can't, you can't do that, man. And he was freaking out. He was embarrassed. He was like, man, you, we don't want to bother her. And um, so, so we didn't. So I don't have, I don't have a picture to be able to, to show you. All right. Um, but another time I was with my wife and we were in Los Angeles. We were in LAX. I was in the gift shop. And in the gift shop, I, I stepped backwards and I stepped on somebody's foot. Have you ever run into somebody? So I bumped into this guy and I, I turned around and it was Chris Rock, right? You can't make this up. I literally, not just figuratively, but I literally bumped in to Chris Rock in a gift shop in LA at the airport. So when I bumped into him, I, I, I turned around and I said, Oh, I'm so sorry. And I looked at him and I knew it was Chris Rock and I turned around and I looked at my wife and I went, Chris Rock. Right? And then he got in line, I got in line and I was kind of debating, should I talk to him? I was nervous in that moment. I was like, man, I don't want to bother him. This guy's, this guy's famous. He's well known. You know, I, we just, I, and I just was kind of, kind of freaked out for a moment. Well, as I was kind of debating on whether or not I should say something to him, some psycho lady, this fan, came and just jumped on him almost, grabbed him, and she handed me her phone, and she said, here, take our picture. All right, and she was all smiling, and I felt crazy. So I took her phone, and I said, okay, on the count of three, one, two, and she had her arm around Chris Rock, just smiling, you know, all cheesing big time, right? And he was... He was smiling, but when I said one, two, three, as soon as I said three, he turned his smile and he went, he went like this. That's the picture she has with Chris Rock. Not him smiling, but him kind of making fun of her. And it's because she invaded his privacy. She interrupted him. She didn't ask for permission. She just grabbed him and assumed that she could get a photo with him. I don't think he was real happy about it, but I got talking to him a little bit. And long story short, I asked him if, if I could get a photo. He obliged, my wife snapped, and he smiled, didn't make a face at me, and I still have that. In fact, I showed it to my church this past weekend as I unpacked this story. And so why I want to unpack it with you today. So Bartimaeus, this is not easy for him, all right? He, he's blind. He's used to asking people for money, but the word on the street that this is Jesus coming by, this is his chance to win the lottery, so to speak. This is his opportunity to, to get a, a miracle. And I don't know what his demeanor was, but I'm going to guess that this was a pretty huge, huge step of faith just to begin to shout out to Jesus, all right? A huge crowd is following Jesus, but he must, he just, he, he just, allows that courage to rise up on the inside of him. And he's like, no turning back. This is my moment. I'm getting Jesus' attention. And he cries out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And here's what happened. Verse 48. Here's what he heard. Be quiet. Ouch. That was the response he got. Shut up. It says many people yelled at him. Be quiet, many of the people yelled at him. Let me just stop for a moment. Have you ever stepped out in faith to share your dream with some people only to have it rejected? And maybe not only having your dream rejected, but some of you watching and listening You've been rejected. 
That hurts. I mean, this is, this is Bartimaeus' chance. He wants a better life. He's sick and tired of being blind. I'm sure he's exhausted and tired of begging just to make a living. He's tired of surviving. Some of you watching and listening right now, you're tired of being in survival mode. It's time to thrive, right? That was his mindset. I'm going to thrive. I'm going to get my miracle. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Shut up. Be quiet. Think about, that had a sting. In that moment, Bartimaeus had two choices. He could hang his head and do what they told him to do, and that's be quiet. And he would have died a blind beggar. Or he could cry out louder. That's what he did. The second part of verse 48 says, after he was yelled at, after he was told to shut up, it says he only shouted louder. Man, that'll preach right there. I love this. This is a good word. This is a good word for you today. It's a good word for me today to hold on and stand strong, to press in even further. The enemy's lying to you, whispering in your ear, you're not good enough. You're not going to make it. You're an accident. You're this, you're that. Guess what? I'm going to cry out to Jesus even louder. I'm going to shout even louder. You're not going to shut me up. You're not going to stop me. You're not going to hold me back. I am going to move from surviving to thriving. My Jesus will sustain me. Greater is he who's in me than he that's in the world. Amen? That's what he does. He shouts louder. Son of David, have mercy on me. Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus heard him. He plowed through that negativity, and he got the attention of Jesus. Verse 49 says, when Jesus heard him, he stopped. And he said, tell him to come here. Now, I love the fact that Jesus didn't go to him. Jesus said, tell him to come here. It was an act of faith to shout the first time. It was a greater act of faith to shout the second time. But now he had to get up and go to Jesus. He actually got brought to Jesus. Check this out. So they called the blind man, who? The people who told him to shut up. They called the blind man and they said, cheer up. Come on, he's calling you. Bartimaeus threw aside his coat. What do you need to throw down? What's holding you down? What's holding you back? He, He threw down his coat. He jumped up and he was brought to Jesus. He came to Jesus, but he had to get up. Sometimes we want our circumstances to change and we're not willing to get up. Remember when Elijah wanted to end his own life and he sat down under a broom tree and asked God to kill him. What did the angel say? Get up. Maybe that's the only thing you're going to hear today. Get up. Bartimaeus got up and check this out. The same people who told him to shut up are the same ones who delivered him to his miracle. When he got to Jesus, Jesus said nine words. Nine words that changed his life. And they're the same words that Jesus is speaking to you today, right now. In this moment, it's not an accident that you're watching and listening to this podcast because God is getting ready to speak to you with the same words that Jesus spoke to Bartimaeus. And those nine words are, what do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? Now, I want to point out that Jesus already knew the answer to this. But he wanted to hear it from Bartimaeus. That tells me that Jesus, he wants us to go to him today. He already knows what we need. He already knows what we want. Psalms 37 4 says, delight yourself in the Lord. He'll give you the desires of your heart. The key in all this is praying in accordance to his will, getting our heart in the right spot. He wants us to approach him. 
He wants you to approach him. What do you want me to do for you? He knew the answer. He knew Bartimaeus was blind. He could see. Bartimaeus couldn't. He could see them helping him over to Jesus. When Jesus looked at him and asked him that question, he already knew, but he still wanted to hear it. And he wants to hear the same from us. He wants us to crawl up on his lap, say, Abba, Father, and tell him what we need. So here's what Bartimaeus said. He said, Rabbi, which means teacher, I want to see. And Jesus said to him, go for your faith. Say that word out loud, faith. It is your faith. Jesus said, it is your faith that has healed you. And instantly, the man could see. And then he followed Jesus. He got his miracle, but then he followed after Jesus. Some people just want to receive, and they're not willing. They're just trying to use Jesus as a genie in bottle, and that's not how it works. And I want to point out that there's a difference between shouting at Jesus and running to Jesus. We need to run to Jesus, and we need to tell him what we want. We want to approach Jesus. In fact, there are seven things I believe happens when we cry out to Jesus, when we shout to Jesus. All right. First of all, Jesus does see you. Jesus sees. Number two, Jesus hears. Not only does he see you, but he hears you. Number three, he cares. He cared for Bartimaeus. That's why he said, what do you want me to do for you? And that's why he answered Bartimaeus' prayer. He does care. Jesus also calls. He called Bartimaeus. Before he healed him, he called him to him. All right? Jesus is calling you to him today. I'm telling you what. Jesus will speak to you. Jesus speaks. He spoke to Bartimaeus. He called him to him, and then he spoke to him. But not only will he speak to you, not only does he see you, not only does he care for you, not only does he hear you, but he will respond to your prayers. And that's what Bartimaeus did. He responded. That's what Jesus did. Jesus responded to Bartimaeus. And then number seven, Jesus answers. Jesus answered Bartimaeus' prayer. He sees, hears, cares, calls, speaks, responds, and answers. The question is this. Are you willing to approach him? Are you willing to shout louder? Are you willing to plow through a crowd of haters to get to Jesus? Here's what Jesus said in John 14, verse 13. You can ask anything in my name and I will do it. Why? So the son can... Receive glory. And this, this is not a name it, claim it, blab it, grab it, or some type of say abracadabra and we get what we want. All right? The message translation says that whatever you request in this way. In other words, we want to look at the Lord's Prayer. That was the model for prayer that Jesus gave us. And he prayed, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. We want to pray in accordance to God's will. I mean, Jesus said in Matthew 7, keep knocking, keep seeking, keep asking, right? And God will, he will, he will keep, we will receive and we will, we will find and the door is going to be open. All right. He said to ask for what we need in the Lord's prayer. It said, give us this day, our daily bread. Jesus wants us to approach him for our daily needs. But the key is praying in accordance to his will. Cause let me read this to you as we get ready to wrap up. First John 1 14 says, since we have this confidence, we can also have great boldness before him. Bartimaeus had boldness. For if we present any request, any request, but then it says this in the Passion Translation, agreeable to his will. If we present any request that is agreeable to his will, he will hear us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we also know that we have obtained the request we have asked of him. We know Jesus always answers. It might not always be the answer we want, but he answers. So are we willing to take the time to pray, to seek his face? I just finished reading Mark Batterson's new book, Double Blessing. Great book, recommend it, go get it. Here's what he said. Prayer is the way we write history before it happens. So let's pray. Let's seek God with all of our heart. Nine words changed Bartimaeus' life. Nine words spoken by Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? And those are the same nine words that he's asking you today. Are you ready to answer him? Man, that's all the time we got. I hope that you're encouraged. My faith was built just sharing and just reading the story. 
Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing the word of God. So I hope that your faith is built. Hold on, stand strong, don't quit, don't throw in the towel. Why? Because 41 will come. All right, 152, episode 152 is in the can. For our producer, Mike Sable, I'm Chuck Tate. I can't wait to see you next week on 41 Strong. PeoriaLife.com.